Hey friends, welcome back to The Daily Dose. We're on day number 16, moving through week number three of our yearly Bible reading program. I want to welcome you guys back. Thanks so much for being here. Our verses that we're going to be, excuse me, our chapters, I always do that, our chapters that we're going to be looking at today are going to be from Genesis uh, 48 through 50. 50 is the last chapter in Genesis. And we're also going to be looking at Psalm chapter 16. Um, now, in, um, in Genesis... So picking up where we left off, uh, Jacob and his family are in the land of Egypt, and Joseph has provided a place for them to stay and is providing them with food as well. And everybody kind of had a happy family reunion, and they're all living together and prospering there in that land. Jacob pronounces a blessing over his sons as we get into the scripture for today. It was customary back then, um, before a father passed away, that he would speak um, a blessing, a benediction, um, sometimes a prophetic word over his children. <clears throat> Oftentimes he would give the firstborn child um, the, the greatest blessing, and then the other children he would give lesser blessings to. But this walks through each of, each of his children, each of the sons, and it talks about the different blessings that he's bestowing or speaking into them. After that, um, Joseph's brothers fear that, you know, hey, it's almost time for our father to pass. What's going to happen when he's gone? Um, after he's gone, is Joseph going to all of a sudden um, have these feelings of revenge come up? You know, is he going to kick us out? Is he going to kill us? What's going to happen? You know, they're thinking, hey, maybe the fact that their father is there and that their father is still alive is the only thing kind of keeping Joseph um, peaceful and calm in, in their whole family situation. So the brothers get concerned. Joseph hears of this and he reassures his brothers that that he doesn't hold a grudge, that he doesn't have any ill plans for them once their father passes, and that he doesn't plan on doing anything crazy. So he tries to comfort them and set them at ease. Um, after that, we read that at the end of chapter 50, at the end of Genesis, Joseph dies. So we have started off with, in, in the beginning of Genesis, we've started off with the creation of things. We've started off with um, the first man that God made and the first woman. We have looked at how they began to be fruitful and multiply and populate the earth. We see sin come in and rear its ugly head when the serpent tempts Eve and Eve and Adam sin. The whole world plunges into basically chaos and, and a, a curse of death, among other things, is pronounced over Adam and Eve, and therefore all of their descendants as well. Um, we see that after the curse takes place, um, that people still continue to multiply on the face of the earth, and God ends up getting, um, getting fed up with just all of the wickedness that is starting to proliferate throughout the world at that time. He sent the flood. He saved Noah and his family. Um, Noah and his family make it through the flood, and then they begin to populate the earth again. And we read about um, Abraham. We read about Isaac. We read about Jacob. We read about Joseph. And that's where we end up here, um, at the end of Joseph's life. And it's, it's a sobering reminder. You know, it's bittersweet. We're, we're seeing Joseph pass, so it's, it's sad. But it's also good that he was able to, um, you know, be able to see Joseph again and reunite and spend time with Joseph and realize that Joseph had been alive that whole time. So they were able to reunite and spend some, some good time together before Joseph expires. But this is also a sobering reminder to all of us that as Joseph did, we're all going to die. Every one of us has an expiration date, just like a carton of milk at the grocery store, just like a container of eggs, just like a jar of ketchup, um, just like a box of Twinkies. Well, actually, I don't think Twinkies probably have expiration dates, um, but you get my point. We all have an expiration date. The only thing is that on products at the grocery store, the expiration date is usually pretty clearly printed. We don't know when our expiration date is going to be. 
I could expire before I get done filming this video. God forbid, I hope not, but it could happen. You could expire before you get done watching this video. So we need to make sure that we're at peace with the Lord, that we're right with God. We need to make sure that we have spent our time here on this planet um, serving the Lord by serving and loving others. Beloved, so be encouraged today. Go forth and live today as if it could be your last. Don't withhold love from anyone. Don't withhold good works from anyone. Don't withhold a helping hand from anyone. I did also want to speak briefly about the, um, the chapter in Psalms that we have today. So again, Psalm 16 is what we're reading in the book of Psalms. And this psalm starts off by saying, Keep me safe, O God, for I take refuge in you. <clears throat> and it goes on um, to talk about how the Lord is David's strength and, and his refuge. So let me read that one again. Keep me safe, O God, for I take refuge in you. Friends, what are you taking refuge in? I ask myself the same thing. Adam, what are you taking refuge in? Are we taking refuge in, <clears throat> in our health? Do we think that as long as we stay safe and don't get the coronavirus that we're good? Is that what we take refuge in? Do we take refuge in being financially secure? Um, for those of us that have jobs, that have stable jobs, for those of us whom God has blessed um, with the ability to support ourselves and our families financially, do we take refuge in that? What would happen if that job went away? What would happen if you got a phone call and said, you know, I'm sorry, but we've, we've been forced to make some layoffs and we're having to lay you off today? Then where would your refuge be? Do you take refuge in secret sins and pleasures? When nobody's looking, do you take refuge on the internet? On websites that you probably shouldn't be visiting? Do you take refuge in a six-pack or a bottle of Jack Daniels? Do you take refuge in your anxiety and worry and your control? Do you try to control everything in such a way that you mitigate any anxiety and worry in your life? Is that what you're taking refuge in? Or are you taking refuge in the Lord? Are you taking refuge in the loving and open arms of the Lord? That's what we should be aiming for. That's what we should be striving for. For those of us that are believers, we were once dead and now we are alive. And we're alive in Christ. He is our only hope. He is our salvation. He is our refuge. Beloved, I encourage myself and I encourage you to not take refuge in things that are perishable. Take refuge in things that are eternal and imperishable, like the love of Christ. So be encouraged as you move forward throughout the day. Thank you for joining me. And I can't wait to see y'all tomorrow. Have a good one. Be blessed. And thank you again for your time. See ya.